Okay, today what we're going to do is uh, do a short little video on how to clean out the micro strainer for the, uh, the Vactor 2100. So there's a couple different types. We have the one that sits uh, horizontally. There's one also that looks similar to this but sits on the vertical. And there's also another one that when you open it up, instead of having one large strainer, it has three separate smaller strainers. So uh, the one that we're going to do right now is the one that sits uh, horizontally with the one large single strainer in it. So uh, what you want to do is make sure that you have all the equipment and little tools that you need to do the uh, clean out. So what you need is a, a piece of 2 by 4 to support the uh, basket and the flange, a, uh, a putty uh, knife to scrape the, uh, the, uh, the door to make sure it's clean, You've got a whisk broom, wire brush, a uh, socket wrench to uh, undo a, a couple of the internal bolts, uh, some anti-seize and some WD-40. Okay, so uh, this is how you do it. So uh, first off, make sure that the truck is off and uh, follow all t lockout tagout procedures before uh, uh, attempting the PM. And then what you want to do is uh, open the valve to make sure that there's no uh, residual pressure or uh, water inside the unit and, and uh, so it'll drain out. Then now uh, very carefully you open up the two uh, latch pins and then pull the, the U-ball back and then uh, open up the unit. Now uh, what you'll find right now is uh, a couple of the, uh, the parts. On the door you'll have a, a rubber or gasket that seals against the, uh, the uh, cylinder door. You'll have a expansion an inspection cover. So what you do is you, you unscrew it and then you carefully pull it back and then you can look inside to see uh, if there's any debris or anything inside of the chamber. This also has a, um, another rubber gasket that um, expands when you tighten it down that seals against the inside of the port. So we'll set this aside and then uh, we'll come back and we'll clean these later. So the first thing you do is you take a piece of two by four and we found that using a, a piece of two by four helps support the flange when you un, unbolt the uh, bolts off. And then also too is it helps support the, uh, the filter, the micro filter inside. So um, take your wrench and you unscrew, you know, break the bolts on the nuts, excuse me. And then when you unscrew them, you want to make sure that they're still in, in good shape. Oh, drop that one. And there's also two um, lock nut, uh, lock washers behind the bolts. Okay, very carefully, you, re, you uh, take off the retaining flange and you can see how the 2x4 uh, supported the microfilter. If you don't have the piece of wood in here, it'll just drop down and also too, this will assist on, on putting the unit back in. So we'll set this to the side. And then very carefully, you remove the micro strainer. Make sure that you know, you're wearing your, your PPEs when doing this. Now we'll set this down here, right? And then uh, remove your two by four. And then what you can do is take your whisk broom and very carefully clean out the inside of the, of the barrel. So, a lot of times people will, will use water to, um, to rinse this thing down, but it's always a good idea to keep this as dry as possible because if you have residual water that sits up in here, it'll uh, create like rust, uh, a, a, an environment that will uh, start uh, the rusting process. So, you know, brush it out as best as you can, you know, and try to keep any of the debris from going down the, uh, the drain valve. Okay. So the next step is to inspect the face of the, of, the, of the flange. This has a little bit of buildup on it, so what we'll want to do is kind of scrape it off a little bit. 
to make sure that it's it's flat and clean. So this will make a better seal when the door shuts. You know, so normally what we do is we'll use a scraper and then follow up with a wire brush to just to make sure that it's it's clean. Um, also too is we uh, put a little bit of WD-40 on the face just to kind of get it going. You may want to put a little bit of WD-40 down inside of the the valve and then cycle it a couple times and what that'll do is also too is if there's any um, build up or any uh, corrosion inside it'll kind of lube it up a little bit. Okay then what you want to do is come back over on this side and inspect the rubber gasket. The gasket, this one looks pretty good. There's no uh, visual cracks uh, and it, it seems pretty pliable. Um, so, you know, what you might want to do is uh, spray a little WD-40 on it. And then very, very carefully kind of maybe get off a little bit of some build up on it. You don't want to go too hard and damage the gasket. But uh, yeah, that feels pretty good. So then after that, you'll start taking a look at some of the internal parts that we, we pulled out. You know, whisk boom off the, the flange, get it, get it clean. And then you want to take a look at your uh, the plug that uh, your inspection port plug. You know, this has got an aluminum backing and then a uh, a wing nut on this side that 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 uh, compresses the rubber which causes the seal and the same thing you want to just inspect the rubber just to make sure it's in good shape and then spray a little bit of WD-40 on it to keep it kind of lubed up a little bit okay now on the particulate filter what you want to do is inspect it for any cracks to make sure it's in good operating order this one looks pretty good. This is made out of stainless steel, so uh, you know to prevent rusting. But if you notice that um, you, we have a lot of uh, twigs and branches and things like this. Now, once this thing gets packed up, it'll significantly decrease the amount of of air return from the bin into the blowers. And what this does is it filters out a lot of the particulates and stuff that will lead to um, premature wear inside of the blower. So, you know, you can come back and use your whisk broom, kind of get this stuff out. And then, um, then we'll use a hose or a water blaster to really clean this thing off. As you see, a lot of this stuff really gets in there. So if you come from the back side and wire brush it off pretty good, a lot of the stuff will fall down from the back side and uh, help it clean. Okay, we're going to speed this uh, little video up, so what we're going to do now is take it over and then wash it out. You can kind of see a lot of the, the dirt and debris coming off of that. Of course, when you do this, you know, we're, we're, we're making a little video here. So, you know, when you do this out in the field, you're going to want to try to get everything off of that. You know, it's always good just to take your time and get a good, clean job. But as you see, it doesn't take too long 
to, to get this looking a lot better than it was before. So now what we'll do is we'll do the, the reinstallation of, um, of the filter unit. Now of course yours is going to look a lot cleaner than this one. But, so, you know, what we do is we just have a trash can upside down to help support it. So what you do is you take your 2x4 and you put it back into the unit like this. And then there's a register up inside there that goes into the internal diameter of the, of the filter. So you'll put it up in here, slide it along, and then you want it up over the top of the register right there. You can see how it fits up inside. And then you take your support flange and then uh, find one of the, the draw bolts. And then you go. Now you see how the 2x4 has supported this up. If you try to do it without a support, it's very difficult. This will want to pull everything down. So you, a 2x4 will hold everything up in there and it kind of makes the installation a lot easier. So then you kind of make sure that you clean off the threads before you put your bolts on. And uh, get a little anti-seize here. Because, this, because these are carbon steel rods and carbon steel bolts, you do have a little bit of moisture in the atmosphere in here and we just want to try to keep down the corrosion factor. So make sure you put your lock washers back on. your nuts kind of lift it up a little bit make sure that it's sitting on there good and then when you tighten up the bolts you want to go back and forth so you get a, an even tightening on the back there so kind of give it a little See this one, you can see where it's drawing in. There, nice and snug. So when you're done, just remove your two by four and you see that two by four helps elevate it and keep it straight back. Now that you have your flange clean and your rubber gasket clean, we can install the inspection plug and tighten it up. Now once you tighten it, it, what it does is it compresses that aluminum flange and expands the rubber to the outside, which makes the seal. Make sure that's tight. Then before you close it, make sure you give the clamp mechanism here a little shot with WD-40 to keep that lubed up. Shut your doors, make sure they're shut correctly. Put the strap there, put the strap there, and you're closed. Make sure your port is clean, and then uh, you can remove your lockout tag out procedures, and, uh, and away you go. And uh, it will definitely increase the, uh, the, the suction um, um, efficiency of the, of the unit, and as you see, it's clean out daily. Um, a lot of times you don't necessarily have to clean take the whole thing apart, but make sure that you uh, check the gaskets and at least take a look on the inside of the inspection port.